What's going on guys, Victor here. I'm with the boys. We got Juno Ryan in the back. What's up guys? We're trying to catch some uh, pogies today. We got Chris Lowe loading up the net because God knows I can't throw one of these things. Me so <laughs> We got it. We, basically we said, Chris, you want to take us fishing on a uh, Chris Lowe charter? And he said, yeah. He's been netting a bunch of pogies, also known as Menhaden, also known as Bunker. Wherever you guys are, in the continental US, people call them different things. Um, they're a really big type of bait fish that he's been getting a ton of. We've been using them for snook bait, kubera bait, but for the longest time you guys have been asking for a pogey catch and cook, and that's what Chris is setting out to do right now. He's got the big net, and what we do is we're running around the river, around the Sebastian area. It's really still, big and you can and you can either see them one of two ways. Either there'll be birds diving on them, or you just see slight flickers right on top of the water. Oh, he's going. Damn, that was nice, when Chris. When did you learn how to throw a net? When did you learn how to throw a net? And when, you, when are classes opening up? Classes are open, boys. <laughs> Class is in School, session. School's in session. I don't feel any. Got lots of jellyfish. Yeah! Try and find one that's flipping. Jellyfish catch and cook? So, as I was saying, you see these little flickers on top. For some reason, bait fish like to, I don't know if they're feeding or what they're doing, knocking parasites off them, but they'll just kind of flicker on top. And that's what we look for. So you see that one flicker and it's usually indicative of the whole school being there. Right there, right, Ryan. Neutral? I'm gonna go reverse. Damn, when did you learn how to throw a net, bro? Do it every day. Are you a commercial fisherman or something? Part-timer. the best type. Anyone that says otherwise is crazy. <laughs> they just flipped up to the left, right there. Reversing. I got him. Did you? Oh, baby, I'm excited. A nice catfish haul? Catfish. Oh my. Dude, you got size jumbos too. Yeah, buddy. Those are megas. Bro, that is a man's bait if I ever seen one. That's a redfish bait right there. Yeah. Sebastian them. special. They're all over right here. They're Woo! crazy. The biggest thing when it comes to cast netting, throwing a net, is making sure you don't have any tangles in your lead line or your, your tuck strings are all messed up. Which is that right there. So that's your lead line and your tuck strings are the pieces of mono that go from the bottom all the way up to the top. Um, so the first thing I do is I'll hold it by the horn and I'll shake it all the way out. Make sure that your net's all the way stretched. I usually load my nets. I grab about a foot down from the horn and then your next section, you want it about waist level. So about right there. And now you're gonna get, you're gonna split your net. By doing this, you're making sure that there's no tangles, because that's what'll mess you up. And there's 20 different ways to throw a cast net, but this is what works for Chris. So I had a little tangle right there, I got it out. So when you load this, you want to split your net 50-50. Alright. The lead line that's closest to you. You want to grab that and put it up on your shoulder. You're going to have a piece that comes off your shoulder that's going down. The way that I throw it, I hook that piece with my pinky and I grab the rest of the net here. And why is that? That's because when you're throwing a big net, this is only a 10, but when you're throwing a 12 or a 14, that final spin is really what opens the net up. So by grabbing it with just the pinky, 50% of the net will roll off your hand no problem, then you hang on to that the last minute and let it roll off. It'll really open your net up good. Thumbs up for Chris right there. Smash that like button. That was that was a very good explanation. What do you think, yeah. Junior Ryan? Not, They're not flipping bad. right there. More. You're a lot better on camera than I am, Chris. Wow, that's saying a lot. Don't you have a YouTube channel He's or something, too? He's got a lot more too? views than me. Neutral. <laughs> the nice thing about net and baits like this is you can feel them in the net when you got them. They'll be tugging. So I didn't get them because I didn't feel them. They just flipped right there. So all those little ripples on top, that's what we look for. Oh, they just flipped right there. Oh, I got a Larry. You got a cat? We've already cooked these on the channel. These are the catfish you guys see 
in uh, Brooks Canal, in Brooks Parents Canal. These Get are channel wires. cats, hardheads. It's a netter's worst nightmare because they have those spines and they get tangled in the net like crazy. Yeah, just like this. That's not what you want. This is what I want to know. So, if you guys call them Pogi, Bunker, Men, Hayden, comment below what you call them. Down here by us, everyone calls them Pogi, sometimes Men, or sometimes Bunker. Nobody really calls them Men, Hayden. And the things we're trying to net, the blocks of chum that are usually sold in bait stores, that's usually those fish ground up into a, a fine chum. Same with the oil. You can buy straight Menhaden oil. Yep. Um, and it's literally just, I don't know how they process it, but you can buy a whole jug and you put a drop of that in the water and you'll see a slick just come out like crazy. I yep. think that's probably why fish love them, because of the oil that they have left. Chris can feel him in his net immediately. Wow. Beautiful. Oh, bro, you could see them everywhere. Oh. Holy smokes, they're fast. I didn't know they were that fast. Dude, they scoot. You guys don't understand how hard me and Vic have been working to try and catch some stuff. And it has been working for us. Can you explain to the people what we've done in the last week? I mean, so we went mahi fishing. We looked for mahi for hours on end, not to find anything, and only catch three small yellow tails. We drove how many, like four hours down to the Keys to try and catch permit, didn't see one permit, Stand, stood on the bridge for 12 hours at a time. It's just been tough, you know, spend a lot of nights at night trying to catch some big snappers. All we caught was junk. It's just, it's just fishing guys, you know, so, and- uh, Jacks are not junk. Jacks are not junk. Jacks, Jacks are the know. lifeline of this boat. <laughs> one, one man's trash is another man's Jacks treasure. Jacks and Benita paid for this whole boat. Look at this. We got ourselves a basket full of dinner. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll put them in my box now for you covered in ice, so they'll be ice now. Yeah, what time are you guys thinking of going out? Is there a secret down. secret technique, Chris Lowe? Just dollar bills just falling in the box. Beauty. Oh, look at all that slime. Yeah. Gnarly. Bunker, also known as Pogi, Manhattan. They actually have a, a lot of meat on them. So we're just gonna knock the sides off like we would with a, a mackerel. The meat is extremely firm. Nothing what you would expect from a bait fish. Since these guys are really bloody and, and gutty and I don't want any scales, I'm gonna rinse them off. Now, I really wish these fish weren't so bony because uh, muscle-wise, they have beautiful, uh, firm, muscle structure but the reason people don't like this is because you have a, a backbone and then you have all these little feather like bones that run from the skin up into the meat that you can't see these kind of like outlines these protrusions that goes into the muscle of the fish and this is the dorsal side of the fish you have to get a little spoon and what we're gonna do is scrape the meat away but unlike ladyfish I noticed with Menhaden when you scrape the meat away you can tend to get bones in it so you have to be very delicate. You can't, like with the clown knife and the ladyfish, since they're bigger fish, those bones get stuck to the skin. With these guys, unless you're delicate, it tends to rip out. So on the dorsal side, I'm gonna go from the head to the tail, pretty gently. And basically you're just making yourself a pile. You can do it in a, you know, a couple different passes until you get close to the skin. And there's no bone in there. It's just nice and firm. Now I flip it around. Once I do that top part, you guys can see the bones kind of exposed. Now we'll go from the tail to the head and you'll notice that it has kind of like ridges, ridges. And I'm just very so slightly scooping the meat off. A couple different passes. You can already see that those bones are starting to protrude up. I'm not giving it a lot of pressure you know, multiple passes. Because the way these bones lie, they run from the tail to the head and that's why I switched it up and going from the tail to the head. I don't think so. And another thing I'll say is, um, make sure you're not flipping your filet over as you're doing this because they're also very scaly. So you don't want to get any scales in your, um, you know, in your final yield of meat. When I was doing it earlier, I was getting a few bones See, like if you do it too much, it rips. 
See, like it right there, I ripped it too hard and you end up with bone in your filet. So that is the cleaning portion. For you to get two ounces of fish off of one side of a little bait fish, these are extremely easy to catch. Make it a fun project with your kids. Or if you're deserted on an island and there's pogies around, you guys can certainly take advantage of what the environment has to offer. And these fish are actually extremely important commercially. Um, they're made into chum. The oils are extracted for omega-3 pills. There are a ton of uses for these fish, including the uh, animal industry. It's actually kind of a controversial and political fish because of um, its endangerment status. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue scooping these up and I know the perfect recipe to make for these guys and that's gonna be steamed fish dumplings. Went to my local oriental market, got myself a little bamboo steamer very excited to whip it up for you guys, so I'll catch you in the kitchen. So this is the Manhattan that I picked off of about seven or eight pogies. Um, not really a whole lot. Like I said, it's tough to get the, the muscle off without getting the bone in there. And then just to spice it up a little bit, we're going to make some separate dumplings with shrimp. So what I have here is Napa cabbage, about a quarter of the Napa cabbage, put in some salt and uh, wrung it out, got the moisture out of there. And actually, I'm basically completely copying one of, uh, another YouTuber that I watch a lot, he's a cooking guy, his name is Joshua Wiseman. So I'll have that recipe linked below because I'm basically recreating it with shrimp and pogi. So the first thing we're gonna do, Napa cabbage, we're gonna take some scallion. Not about, not equal parts, but just about. Okay, I'm just gonna toss this with my hands. So we have our veg. The aim's got me saying veg now. I know he's watching this one. He loves these videos. So we're gonna add half to our pogi, half to our shrimp. Which is the shrimp that we caught. That's correct. So this is actually right here, just I have a bunch of little Cut up shrimp. This is shrimp caught locally in Hillsborough Inlet. What was it? In like March or February? I honestly don't remember. But it was caught by us, so we're gonna season it very lightly with some soy. Just a little bit of soy, a little bit of soy in both. We have some grated ginger. I'm gonna add some ginger in there, some ginger in the shrimp one. And then we also have some minced garlic. Some minced garlic in there. Now I'm just gonna toss this with my hands. And the, uh, the pogi is very um, soft and mushy to begin with. So, you know, you don't have to worry about chopping it into a bunch of little pieces. So big problem that you should try to avoid is do not let your dough dry like I did. Make sure that as soon as you make your dough and you roll them out, um, this is in about three inch sections, three inch diameter, and now we fill them up. You keep your fingers moist, so that way wait, you can seal it off. And since they dried up on me a little bit, I'm not able to stuff them as much as I want, but um, about that much. Now we take, we pinch right here at the top to close it off. And what you're supposed to do is take the top half and bring it towards you like this. And you do three folds. One, two, three. And then you seal it off like that. And you do the same thing on this side. You take the top half, you bring it towards you. Top half, bring it towards you. Top half, bring it towards you. And then you pinch it off. It might not look as pretty, but you're supposed to have one kind of notched side and one smooth side. So this is my first time making dumplings, but they're gonna taste, I can tell you right now, they're gonna taste great, especially with the Manhattan. I think Manhattan is something perfect to use because it is an oily fish to begin with. And when you steam something, you know, you're not really using any oil, you're just using water vapor to cook whatever it is. And since these dried up a little, I just wet my fingers to make them more pliable. And we stuff them with our Pogi, cabbage, scallion, soy stuffing. So we got a little bamboo steam basket. Never used one of these before, but I've been told 
line it with something that's non-stick like these cabbage leaves, which Joshua told us about in the video, because the, um, the dumplings would stick to the, uh, the bamboo. I don't know if you're supposed to put this many in at once, but you know what? We're just going to send it because we're trying to do it in one batch. So this layer is the pogi. This layer is going to be our shrimp layer. And that is not dirt on the cabbage, despite it looking dirty. I tried scrubbing and it just won't come off. So we put on our double layer bamboo. We put on our top and we let it steam. I don't know how long it's going to take. I think like five to 10 minutes. So we'll check on them then. So now we're going to make a little dumpling dipping sauce. This is just a little water mixed with some palm sugar. We're going to add it to about a clove of garlic, a teaspoon, between a teaspoon and tablespoon of rice vinegar, tablespoon of soy, sesame oil, about a teaspoon, and then a nice dose of scallion. I think I left them in for 10 minutes. Nothing is sticking, they're not tearing. These are the pogey dumplings. We got dumplings, baby. We got dumplings. Some scallion. So dumplings are actually something that Victor and I enjoy getting while we go out to dinner. Like when we go to like get sushi or something, we get um, crab dumplings. Crab, pork. Fried ones, right. steamed ones, we love them. I don't think we've ever had a fish dumpling before though. Mm -mm. Um, I think it's so good. It's at the point now where I come into everything with like a high expectation. Like I'll be honest, like I feel like a lot of people when we try different things are probably just like, oh my God, like, ew, I can't believe they're eating that. This, there's no way that's gonna be good. But now after trying so many things, my, I don't know, my mindset has changed, so much has changed. So like, I literally go into things with like high expectations now. Even if I'm like eating a bait fish or like eating something that people would normally consider a trash fish. Like yep. I'm coming into it with like, oh, this is gonna be so good, which is so crazy for me, you know? Like having that different mindset. And it truly is the way that you learn to cook certain fish based on what that fish can provide for you. Yeah, you can fry any kind of fish and it's probably gonna be good, but like a fish like this, you're probably not gonna be able to fry it because it's really hard to clean without the bones. I mean, yeah, you can fry the whole thing and then eat around the bones. Okay, you can do that. But learning to cook what you're catching based on what it is, is what's gonna change the way that you enjoy eating fish. I am tired of hearing people say that they don't like a certain fish. Yeah. Maybe you cooked it wrong. Try it again. Don't be afraid to try it again. Like, there are seriously no trash fish out there if you're cooking it properly and just doing a good recipe. That's Killed all I have it. to say. <laughs> Mic drop. Done. It was so good. I liked it. So, and it, as far as like table fare, it does not get lower than this. I know that there are some people in New England right now who are like, you guys are full of BS. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a bait fish, but it is so good. You gotta treat it for what it's worth. It's annoying, you gotta, you know, scrape it around the bones, but it's humbling. That's what I love about these videos is every time I do them, I'm humbled. And what, it makes you appreciate going, fishing, catching so much more because not every day is a sleigh. Everybody wants to have a full cooler. Everybody wants to get the wahoo, the dolphin, the snapper, but it, it's, it humbles you, it brings you back to reality, and it, it grounds you as a person to realize that everything, I don't care whether it's a snail or frog or lizard, at one point, people were eating it, it's a protein source, and it should be treated with the respect that it deserves. And that holds true for something like a Manhattan. These fish, like I said, man, they're delicious. We, we were actually off camera. We said we liked the Manhattan more than the shrimp. The shrimp's got a nice crunch, mm -hmm. which fish you're not gonna get the crunch with because right. it's, it's fish, but flavor-wise, there's a reason 
Fish go crazy over Menhaden. They got a really nice oily flavor. You guys saw, I killed three the while she was I, talking. The reason I made that weird face was, did you see I had a shrimp off of this one? Did you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I might have mixed and matched them a little bit, but. Um, no, I said I appreciate I appreciate the crunch of the shrimp, Yeah. but I think the fish one has more flavor. It came out really good. It binds to the cabbage and uh, the ginger and the garlic real well. With the dipping sauce. So they good. killed it again. Thank you, babe. He said that he doesn't like getting compliments at the end of these reviews, but it's more than him just making a good recipe. Like, it takes a good person cooking a good recipe. Like, he is unique and creative, and it's just really good. And it's because that you really care about what you're doing so thank you there's your small compliment <laughs> thank you babe for those of you guys who don't know brick and i launched a website called floridalobsternets.com recently the famous clear acrylic lobster nets you guys always see us using our videos that whether it's for mini season or opening day they are for sale we're making them brooks bedding all the stuff i'm putting on the handles and um, she's been killing it in, in that aspect. So um, we got the website up and running. You guys can find it linked below or at floridalobsternets.com. And that's all I got to say. I'm gonna enjoy my Saturday night with my beautiful fiance and I'll catch you guys in that next one.